What's good with YouTube? You already know Big Blocker with a comics perspective. I'm gonna smash, dash, and slide on through with that little bit of energy, man. Please hit the like, comment, subscribe, all those things to help support this channel, and hit that bell notification for future, future fire content, man. I got an exclusive about the Ghost Massacre, man. Okay, look, this came out, man, in the news. Exclusive news break. Exclusive, okay. This likely targeted in Ghost Massacre was arrested hours after murders. The grandfather of teen mom, Alyssa Peraz, was on the run from the law the night she was murdered while trying to save her baby's life. As members of the Peraz family were executed one by one in January, pre-dawn ambush that saw six of them killed in and around the mess of trailers that made up their ramshackle compound, the likely target of the assassins behind the notorious ghost massacre was already gone. Martin Peraz, 47, has the word crazy tattooed on his cheek and was better known by a street named Shooter. He wore off on his Harley Davidson carrying 50 grams of methamphetamine that he intended to distribute, according to federal prosecutors. The, the time the bullets began to explode on his family's compound. He and his 52-year-old brother, Eladio Perez, are confirmed members of the Sudanos gang and had funk with his family's accused killers. As the police reports describe the hate-filled Hatsfield McCoy like bad blood between Perez and the two men from the rival North Daniel gangs, that morning, they stormed Peraz's ramshackle home and his surrounding trailers, killing everyone they could find. Elito Peraz was the first to die, to their county investigators say, when he was fatally shot in the torso and then in the leg. Marcos Peraz, the elder brother's 19-year-old son, died of a gunshot wound to the head. Jennifer Anella, who was Mark Peraz's reported girlfriend, was forced to her knees and executed. The family much rushed. Rosa Peraz, 72, was shot dead in her sleep. As gun blasts echoed behind her, Alyssa Peraz, Mark Peraz's granddaughter, bolted from the house while clutching her 10-month-old baby, Nicholas, desperately trying to save her infant's life. She darted down the driveway. Her terrifying final moments before she was shot to death were caught on her family's internal security surveillance. Tulare County Sheriff Mike Bordrox was emotional as he described the death blows delivered to Alyssa and Nicholas, who were the final two to be killed that morning. She ran to the gate. She ran to the fence, protecting her child, and laid it on the other side of the fence. A young lady, a young mother, jumped over the fence in an effort to save her life and her baby's life. Alyssa and Nicholas were both found dead in the street, shot in the back of the head. Hours after the mer merciless attack, Taylor County Sheriff's and Drug Enforcement Administrative agents were stalking a house where Martin Cross had been spotted with a second girlfriend in Goshen, an unincorporated community, an unincorporated community of about 5,000 outside of Visalia. They watched as he climbed the opposite Harley around 7.30 p.m. and entered the home. Deputy Lucio Cobos followed his path and banged on the door, urging Paraj to come out. The gang member yelled back, What do you want? Respond that investigators want to speak with him regarding the recent crime, referring to the grisly slayings that unfolded earlier that morning, according to a probable cause affidavit filed by the DEA, Sean Bradley. Investigative reporters hearing a woman yelling, and unknown, unknown noises coming from the window in the kitchen. Peraz opened the front door a short time later. The agent wrote at which point investigators moved in to arrest him. He initially resisted and refused to put his hands behind his back, according to the affidavit. He removed his cell phone from his pocket and threw it towards his girlfriend. Detectives took Peraz into custody and immediately obtained a search warrant to comb the house and vehicles on the property, including the Harley and a Chrysler 300, which were towed to a police impound lot. Investigators who searched the house found a loaded Smith & Wesson revolver loaded with 38 special bullets in a drawer along with more rounds of ammunition. Investigators report recovered an additional 36 rounds in the passenger door jam of the Chrysler 300. In the trunk, there was a black bag with a gallon-sized baggie of methamphetamine bagged for sale, according to the complaint. In the garage where he and his second girlfriend would stay, investigators said they found what appeared to be traces of amounts of heroin. Peraz is now facing federal charges of possession with intent to distribute 50 grams and more of methamphetamine and a mixture of substances containing a detectable amount of heroin. Being a felon in possession of firearm and being a felon in possession of ammunition. He is being held at the Tulare County Jail according to court records. Since 1997, he has been in and out of prison on a range of charges related to guns and drugs. Peraz has been wanted by authorities since January 3rd, 13 days before his family was massacred. Deputies went to the Harvest Avenue home to conduct a parole compliance check. They found he was in violation of his parole conditions in connection with an assault and battery and weapons case. According to a Tulare County, County Sheriff's report, when deputies arrived, they could not 
find Martin, but his, his brother, Eladio, was home with his girlfriend, Melissa Bailey. A deputy spotted 13 live rounds of ammunition in plain sight, a violation of Eladio Perez's parole. I told you guys I found ammunition. This was before they, they, they hit the house. Eladio was asked if he had ever been to prison, and he advised that he had. The deputy asked if he was still an active Sudanio gang member, and he stated he was, so they were actually active. Deputies obtained a search warrant and found meth pipes in his trailer, along with body armor in the closet, which felons are prohibited from owning. An AR-style rifle was allegedly stuffed under a mattress, along with a Ruger P-89 handgun and stockpiled ammunition. With that, Aledo Perez was taken into custody for parole violation. He was released day days later on a $60,000 bail. The report notes no contraband was located in the trailer where Shooter lived. According to his mother, Rosa, Still, investigators contacted dispatch and issued an arrest for his warrant as a profiler because of his having access to shed where rifle ammunition was located. Martin Perez was on the run from the law and apparently some old enemies in the moments in the moments when his family's accused killers, Angel Nanun, Uriate, and Noah Beard, arrived at the Harvest Avenue compound that had been searched by authorities less than two weeks earlier. The moment his Norteño rivals walked onto the property, was caught on the same internal security surveillance video that captured Elisa's de desperate attempt to save her baby's life. Court records paint a picture of a blood feud between Martin Peraz and Uriarte that stretched back decades in the small community of Goshen, a small town with a western field that surrounds by, surrounded by the mountain ranges of Kings Canyon and Sequoia National Parks. Police reports reviewed by LA Mag show a long shimmered hatred between the men. Who lived, with a block, who lived within a block of one another that brought allegations of drive-by shootings on both sides. This is fucking crazy. <laughs> Uriarte, who has the letters GF for Goshen Familia tattooed on his face, pleaded no, no contest to firearm charges after a 2014 drive-by shooting. Witnesses said he carried out targeting Martin Peraz. No bullets hit anyone, but Uriarte was identified by one of the witnesses. Ugh, this stuff is long. He then admitted to the crime in his gang affiliation, which allowed him a seven-year prison sentence, according to court records. He also been served five years. Cross has been accused of attacking Uriarte's grandmother, grandmother's house years earlier with bullets blasted from a passing car. Both men had served long stints in California state prisons where Shooter's gang, Ansel to the Mexican Mafia, and Uriarte's gang comes under the umbrella of protection from the rest of Familia. It's not unusual for rival gangs to set up shop <coughs> on the same block in the small in the small towns that make up Tulare County. What is unusual, however, is an entire family being targeted for a cold-blooded massacre allegedly at the hands of those neighbors. Beard, which we don't know too much about Beard, the second at the house that night, is a convicted felon and wanted for an outstanding warrant on a separate guns and drug-related charge stemming from an October 2021 arrest at a Visalia Motel where he had a loaded weapon and cocaine. Police say Beard wasn't formally charged with the case until late December, when a warrant was issued for his arrest, near weeks before the brutal slayings. Alavezos blames the filing delay on California's prison reform laws that make it difficult for prosecutors to charge gun offenses without firing a test on the weapon and laws that make cocaine possession a misdemeanor. So they're trying to see what they're trying to do? Investigators say Beard was a man who fired fatal shots to the heads of the teen mom and her baby boy. He has pled not guilty to a slew of charges connected to the murders and is being held without bail. <coughs> when dozens of cops and federal agents showed up at the Gilshin home where Yuri Archie was tracked down, he put up a fight and exchanged bullets with ATF agents. None were shot. Yuri Archie wounded in the full, the fusillade gunfire remains hospitalized. He is also charged in connection with a massacre. Elisa's father, Mar Martin Perez, is also an admitted member of the Sudanios. He's been incarcerated in state prison since October 2019 and is stated to be held until 2030. The teen's TikTok page is filled with heart-wrenching videos of her playing with Nicholas. But there's also one that highlights the poverty of choices Elisa grappled with growing up in the grip of gangs. A tribute to tough guys, her father and grandfather that reads, When the cops find out who my dad and grandpa are, it shows a picture. Anyways. Interesting. So that same day, 
this individual was taking off has a picture of Mark Perez. This was uh, by the Los Angeles Magazine. So this was just a little bit of details about what happened the night of the murder, where the alleged target was going, and a little bit of back history, man. There's not too much to add. Um, they're still gaining more information and people are still running articles, man. But I thought this was kind of interesting because it shows that the night that these dudes went to go do the hit, this individual had fucking took off. So the target of this whole fucking massacre, right, was someone who was balling out there, Martin Peraz, you know what I'm saying? 47 years old. And uh, what can you say about it, man? This is kind of an interesting uh, uh, article, man. You know, uh, I didn't know that, uh, you know, crazy, this dude Martin had previously shot at the dude's house. There's been all kinds of food that I've, we've been come to uh, realize with this whole case, man. And uh, that's why there's so much issues about what really happened, you know what I mean? These dudes were under the regiment. As far as these NF dudes, they were working with the regiment, not the NF North Daniels. But um, these do these North Daniels were working with someone out there in the streets, so that's a fact. And apparently, it was reported and whatnot, man. And there was discussions and so forth. They were under surveillance, and there was reports that were being filed and whatnot. All kinds of crazy shit, man. By the dude that was out there running the streets. Um, that's I'm gonna leave it there. Um, but uh. Yeah, this is a crazy story, man. It gets more interesting and interesting, man. Hope you guys enjoyed this. That's all I have to say about this, man. It's your boy Flacco. I'm gone.